It is the new season, and there is a lot going on in NASCAR. NASCAR is testing some significant changes to next-gen car at Phoenix, while Cup teams are optimistic about new revenue deals. So, NASCARians don't go anywhere as we have more to discuss on the updates today. But before we begin, do subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. On January 24 and 25, 2023, officials from the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing plan to conduct two days of testing at Phoenix Raceway. The purpose of the testing was to examine the necessary updates to the rules package for the next-gen car. These updates may include possible changes to the aerodynamics, trial runs using mufflers in some races, and efforts to cut rubber buildup in wheel wells. During the practice sessions, held on Tuesday and Wednesday at Arizona Oval, a total of six teams competing in the NASCAR Cup Series took part. The testing, which took place over the course of two days, was broken up into five separate sessions. The present rules configuration will be used for the first practice session in order to establish a baseline which will then be followed by four more sessions using a variety of different combinations. However, officials have stated that the improvements shown on road courses and oval tracks of less than one mile should be carried over to all other types of track types. By making adjustments to the car's floor or underwing, Cup Series teams, drivers and officials will attempt to analyze the aerodynamic potential of the vehicles in an effort to improve their ability to navigate through traffic and pass other vehicles. Dr. Eric Jacuzzi, Vice President of Vehicle Performance at NASCAR, stated that computer modeling of these improvements generated higher downforce, but these demonstrations also showed fundamental differences in traffic behavior. In a statement, Jacuzzi said, When it's behind another car, it doesn't lose as much front downforce as it would, which means it doesn't push as it comes closer. If you watch the cars race around the track, you should be able to make the connection. You may have noticed that they frequently run in a nose-up position. The explanation for this is that the more air you can deliver to the diffuser, the more downforce it creates in the back. Because of this, we were able to reduce the height of the spoiler while maintaining nearly the same level of downforce that we had at the beginning of the year, thanks to the modifications we made that allowed for better airflow. But do you know which teams competing in NASCAR took part in the two-day test that was held at Phoenix Raceway? Here is the list. Ross Chastain driving number one from Trackhouse Racing Chevrolet. Brad Keselowski driving number six from Racing Ford. Christopher Bell is number 20 at Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota. Julie Logano driving number 22 from Team Penske Ford. Jimmy Johnson driving number 43 from Legacy Motor Club Chevrolet. And Ricky Stenhouse Jr. driving number 47 from JTG Daugherty Racing Chevrolet. The venue at Phoenix Raceway which had hosted NASCAR's championship weekends for the previous three seasons, was the location of the test for the next-gen organization on January 25 and 26, 2023. Will these changes in next-gen car be going to work? What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Also, do subscribe to our channel and hit the like button if you are enjoying today's video. Now let's get to why the Cup teams are optimistic about the new revenue deals. The teams competing in the NASCAR Cup Series continue to hold out hope that they will be able to secure a new revenue-sharing arrangement that will assist in improving the team's long-term financial sustainability. The previous year, in October, a group that represented a negotiation team for Cup owners detailed its efforts to present NASCAR with improvements to its business model. In the end, however, the revisions were not accepted by the sanctioning body. The seven-point proposal which the group declined to address in detail at the time, was presented in anticipation of the imminent expiration of current Cup Series charters and NASCAR's current TV arrangement, both of which terminate at the conclusion of the 2024 season. According to the club, NASCAR's counterproposal featured a little gain in revenue, and the emphasis was placed on decreasing costs drastically. According to Motorsport.com's interview with RFK Racing President Steve Newmark, who is also a part of the team that is negotiating. A lot of the same difficulties are still the same issues we're working through. There is a model that works for everybody, which truly helps advance the sport to the next level. Simply said, there are a lot of puzzle pieces, and we need to figure out how to put them together. 
The expansion of the sport is one of the primary reasons I have such high hopes that we will be able to reach an agreement. If we were in a situation similar to the one we were in five years ago, in which the sport has reached a plateau, it might be more difficult to come up with an entirely new paradigm. According to Newmark, an enhanced racing product, along with increased TV ratings in the most recent seasons, could help contribute to the production of a larger media deal. According to what he had to say, you need to have all of them working together and rowing in the same direction. This includes the sanctioning body, the tracks, the teams, and the drivers. The problem that we're facing right now is that the teams, from a financial point of view, are struggling. Even though our business model is flawed, the sport continues to be very successful. Because of it, we are aware that there is a way to proceed in order to work things out. There is going to be a great deal more labor involved. Because of the manner that this sport has been managed for such a long time, it feels a little bit more foreign to us than it otherwise would. In the next weeks, it is something that I will most certainly be paying close attention to. In addition to Newmark, the other people on the negotiating team are Jeff Gordon, vice chairman and co-owner of Hendrick Motorsports, Dave Alpern, president of Joe Gibbs Racing, and Curtis Polk, vice chairman of Hornet Sports and Entertainment and part owner of 2311 Racing. And apart from this, do you know a cool paint scheme of Team Penske's Pennzoil car that got everyone's attention? Joey Logano is the NASCAR Cup Series champion from the year before. The 32-year-old might look a little different this year, though, because he got a treatment over the off-season that gave him new hair follicles. The car with the number 22 will also look different. A picture of Logano's Pennzoil plan got out and was posted online. The picture was taken in North Carolina at the Team Penske shop. It reminds us of an old Pennzoil car. When Steve Park drove for Dale Earnhardt, Incorporated. He ran a very similar theme. Logano has now won two races in a row. In 2018, he won his first title in the series, and in 2022, he won his second. The car will probably be used in the Vegas Pennzoil 400. Joey Logano and Ryan Blaney both used Pennzoil pink schemes for that race. NASCAR starts getting ready for the race on March 5 in Las Vegas. Team Penske's Jordan Erickson wrote on Twitter, Steve does a great job with all the Pennzoil cars. Last year was very modern, but next year will have a retro feel. In 501 races, Lugano has won 31 times. In his 15-year career, he has led 92-93 laps. The 2023 NASCAR season starts on February 5, 2023, with the clash of the Coliseum. Lugano has won this event in the past. What are your thoughts regarding this video? Tell us in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed today's video. So subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and press the bell icon to see more of our videos on NASCAR updates.